when I'm not on the beach reading some intellectual stuff or chilling in the water, splish splash, splish splash, splish splash. I lost my balance. Then I'm chilling here on this awesome balcony with tomatoes. But obviously I didn't just show you this balcony just for the fun of it. This is also where my little sketching corner is when I have time during the day. And this is also where I have drawn this little tank robot guy that we are going to color now with the help of Procreate. And I already prepared the file here. But first thing, I want to go to Instagram and there is a gentleman called Patrick Vagasreiter, I think. There we go, Petso Ketso. And I'm going to steal his coloring style because I want to keep it easy. And he has a lot of this really cool um, robots and I just want to keep it in this sort of same style. So I am just going to do a couple of screenshots. So I saved a couple of the amazing drawings of his and it's okay for me to steal because I'm sort of Hungarian, he's sort of Austrian, we have a history, so I think he'll gonna be okay with it, at least I hope. Okay, back to Procreate. Now what we wanna do is go to Canvas and do a reference and now we can go to Images and choose, let's say, this one. There we go. Okay, now that we have sort of a reference in the direction I want to go into, I am going to create a new layer. I'm going to bring it below the photo layer and I am going to set this to uh, multiply if I find it. There we go. So now anything I draw below it should be visible. Uh, background doesn't really matter here, but what I can do here is I'm just going to do my selection tool and I'm going to go for sort of the green he has there, a bit more yellowish green, military, right? Something in that direction. We can adjust it later. Now all I want to do is stick within my lines as much as possible. And this is the slightly less interesting part where I just go about and color select, well color select, just make sure to select the whole shape. And with that, we are back to the beginning and our selection is nice and done. Of course, there are some areas that should not be selected. So for that, we just go to the remove and then just remove these parts of the selection. And you will see immediately, as soon as we close our little circle, you have the stripes there. So that does is not part of our selection anymore. You can see if there's any more areas. You can, for example, this here, but this can be done later as well. Now because this is, I'm trying to do this for beginners. Let's make sure we're on the right layer. From here, just press down and pull it in. And now the selection is going to be filled with this color. If you are not quite sure about your color yet, what you can do is create a new layer. The selection is still active. You can turn this one off and then you can long press here and color select whatever you think this is a nice green and just pull this in and, oh, selection is not there, not a problem. What we're going to do is tap on this one and select. And now we have the same selection. That is why it's always good to have this outline because now we can just pull this color in and fill it. Let's see, did I color pick? No, now I color picked. So we're gonna take this back again, drag it in here and just put it in there. There we go. So we have a two slightly different colors. I do like mine more, but you can always pick if, if you're not quite sure about your colors just yet. So what I am going to do now is just lock down like with two fingers or you tap on the alpha lock. So what this does is if I get rid of my selection, if and if I want to draw, whatever I draw, it's only going to happen on pixels that are already on this layer. So I will never go outside of there. There we go. But just to be sure, I am still going to draw on a different layer and I'm going to do a clipping mask. This means 
basically the same thing as there, but you have more freedom to, uh, to mock about. So I'm going to take a darker color of this green, just push it a little bit in this direction. Uh, and I'm gonna go a little bit colder in the shadows for, for some reason now. <laughs> I just feel like it. Let's see if it works. I think it does. And now basically just start shading in. If I decide that my light source is from this direction, means that most areas here, like for example, this here is going to be in shadow. And as for my brushes, I really use the medium hard air brush, so, so nothing special. It's just if we go to the, to the basic painting brushes, we have a round brush that you can use that one as well. Air brushes, there we go. Um, medium hard brush. So I, I think I use one of these. You can take any of these and just start. You can again use the lasso tool as well if you're more comfortable with that. But now I'm just sculpting in the areas that I'm expecting to be in shadow. Keep in mind what I like to do and what we can see here as well. He has the green, he has a gray as, as a neutral, and then he also has a yellow in there. And if we choose one of his uh, other drawing, same thing. He has his green, he has a gray here, also brown going with the green, and then he has a couple of accents with this white and the yellow. Let's take a look at the other image as well that we have. He has his greens, two different shades of greens. He has some grays, and then he has some accent with this white here and the blues here. And he also has a blue for the thing, but that doesn't count in this case. I like this brush because you can do sort of shadings and it becomes, if you press uh, less, it's less dark. And if you press more, it's more dark. And what I, what I like to do when I do stuff like this, if I draw a new layer, I just imagine having a cube like this. So this is what I want to apply there as well. So let's get rid of these two and let's just continue with this. Uh, sometimes it's better if you want to color pick, it's smart to take away that layer just because there is paper grain. As you can see, we have grayer areas. So the color that you're going to pick is actually going to be darker than what you were expecting. So now you just continue and fill in all the parts that should be uh, in shadow, so which is very, we just follow that cube. So this side, of the leg is going to be in shadow. The underside of this robot crotch area is going to be in shadow and the same here. So this area should all be in relative shadow. Okay, so here I miss a selection, which is not a problem. We just come down here, take the select tool. We, add, we, we want to select now. So I select this area and I just make sure to click and clear. And that is not a problem, we can continue. Vacation is good. Now we're at the point where I was like, okay, I maybe should have started with a gray area. So I'm gonna add a new one, make this alpha lock as well. And I'm just going to try and this is sort of a gray bluish color, which I think should work, but we can change this later on, not a problem at all. Uh, and now, this is for some reason alpha locked already. I didn't want to alpha lock, I wanted to make it a clipping mask. There you go. So now stuff like gears, guns, uh, joints, I like to color gray. So that's my next step. Just going in, taking all these guns, all these mechanisms here. And yeah, I wasted a little bit of time by uh, adding so th this is a step that you should do before the shadows, but it is also okay to do it like this. So now this is again up to you and you, you have to decide which parts you want to have in gray. Uh, we were looking at him as well. And you can see here as well, sort of, it's nice to have uh, 20, 80 or uh, 30, 70 sort of ratio to what is gray and what isn't gray. And as I said before, you can always change these ratios. All right, so I feel like I have a bit too much green. So what I'm going to do is just look at panels and surfaces that I think 
maybe it would make more sense to have these together with the rest of the not too much green too much gray uh, for example here as well I think these could all remain in the green zone and I think that would make it a bit calmer Uh, next step, I just saw on the on the screen of the recording that this is a little bit saturated on that screen, which means that I can do two things. I can come here to my adjustments. I can go to hue saturation brightness. Uh, you can hear the dog who has been left here alone. <laughs> let me let me bring her here so she's not going crazy. Okay, so hue saturation. We can bring the saturation down a little bit and shift it more towards the yellow but as you can see this does quite a bit of change so i'm also gonna open it up just a little bit and this is some delicate play that you, you can play as much with it as you want i'm gonna bring it closer here and there's also if you tap it you can sort of preview the change and i think i like this quite a bit so i'm gonna apply it we can do the same thing for our shadows as well. Just go to adjustments and do the same. Oh, you can hear the dog still not happy that she's been left alone with me. I will bring down the saturation just a little bit. We can make it brighter or darker. And we can push it more towards the blue or more towards the yellow. Whatever will work for us. I think, I think actually dog please i think actually the warmer <laughs> tone works better yep preview yeah so i hope this looks good on the camera yeah the camera picks it up better as well all right ma'am please can you tell me why you were such a shit the other day what was it because we were waterboarding you ma'am were you screaming because we were waterboarding you no i didn't think so ma'am it's because the person who feeds you left the house. That's all, right? That's why you were such a little shit. Ma'am, no comment, please. So this is an adjustment that we can do. Uh, now we want to have um, like the same sort of accent color that he has there. And I was thinking this could be like an orange screen. So I'm just going to go into the orange uh, new layer and make it a clipping mask as well and just color this in orange. Hey. And now I'm actually going to pop back into the shadow greens here and I am going to add some more shadows. And with that we can also start adding the shadows for uh, the grays. All right, now we are switching to the grays. They need shadows as well. Uh, something that I noticed here, the grays are in a much green warmer version. So I'm going to do an adjustment there as well. I'm going to try and push them a little bit into this yellow direction. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do, color, and I'm just going to, uh, on a new layer, go over this. What is recommended is renaming these. So I'm going to name this flat colors. Uh, I'm going to name this rename green shadows. I'm going to rename this grays. And this is going to be gray shadows. Uh, these could be on the same layer, but I just want to have the option. Uh, once again, you might want to turn this layer off when you pick the color. Come on, shut up, God. But for me, right now it's not important because we're going darker anyways. So I'm just going to do this. Oh, what we could do, if you don't want to go outside the lines, you can select this and say uh, select. And now here we are only drawing within that selection. And then again, everything just like we did before, everything that we think should be a bit darker, we can make a little bit darker. 
So for example, this is darker. So as you can see, I had quite a bit of fun. I also added this drop shadow for uh, the barrel there itself. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to add it everywhere because there could be much more drop shadows, but I think that is a nice little touch. And now my favorite part comes, which I call highlights. And actually, I put this on top of... Well, actually, no, I'm going to do two highlights. I'm going to do highlights one, rename. One and this goes under the line art, so which means I go for the green ones, so I select that and I'm going to make this more yellow, push it higher and then just where I think there's a bit more light hitting, I'm just going to draw in a couple of, like basically here as you can see where there is a change in surface. And the dog is really not happy that I'm doing the highlights now. But it's, it's just a tough light, tough life, because the highlights need to be done. And it is what it is. So here the top of our tank could be relatively this nice highlighted area. As you can see, that works pretty well. So this will make everything pop a little bit. Okay, and now we do the same thing for the grays again. So I just select this gray and I'm going to push it a bit higher and try to keep it warmer. Although, because we're so close to the edge here, the, the saturation doesn't, shouldn't do actually a lot of difference. So this is minor, but it's still fun and it goes in the same vein as what we did with the green ones. And then maybe we can almost do like this could be somewhat like a reflective area like that. So yeah, highlights are always some of the most fun part of painting. And there's even a next step of highlights, which I enjoy even more. Now we have this orange and this is also like a see-through sort of orange. So I'm going to give it, go into a more redder area. And where we have the edges of the glass, that is going to be a bit less see-through. So I'm going to come in a little bit of darker orange and also down here and this represents the thickness of the orange glass and we can also come in with a much brighter orange so let's push it up here and even more in the yellow area make it a bit thinner all right all right dog you you don't agree with this but uh, hey this is what i'm teaching the people and then we have a bit of this and then what we can do is make this thicker and then we also have sort of like just stripes like this and this should give us a nice see-throughness his uniform should be like brownish in my opinion there we go i, I don't want to do too much like here you can get lost in detail which is not really visible because it's so small so you seeing me zoom in all the time not the smartest thing sometimes it's better just to keep on drawing as it is like this okay next step this is my favorite step is highlights too and this goes on top of everything and this means that i, I can color pick this Push it a bit brighter, more towards the yellow. And now I'm just gonna draw on top of everything. You would think this is sort of like double work, but it really makes quite a big difference. Like you can see it also just like when I turn it on and off, it adds quite a bit. And you can also go a bit graphic and just draw in a couple of places that will give effects like almost like chipping and, and wear and tear, just like I did here with the black lines. Sort of the same thing happens when you do it uh, with this on top of it as well. This is, this is the painting fun. Usually I, I'm, I'm sticking with lines and not too many colors, but I have to admin, admit this is quite a bit of fun part of, of painting. And it's also very relaxing, also just seeing, seeing the results relatively immediately it is an old metal right so you want to sort of stick with the material as well you can see him as well he didn't really go shiny anywhere so i want to sort of keep that in mind okay something that i sort of forgot maybe he doesn't have here so much or has and i i, I just forgot about it is 
uh, bring in a little bit of ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is wherever light doesn't hit. And imagine that if I take a green here and darken it a bit and give it like a soft uh, airbrush, this area here would be a bit darker because there is no not enough light bouncing around. So from here it gets light from everywhere but in there it doesn't. And you can see there is quite a big difference if we apply stuff like that or not. And I am going to just erase parts of it and add a bit more here and there. Make sure to put it below maybe the grace. That might be helpful. Uh, for example, what I can do this whole area here in my opinion is mostly in shadow so there is a lot of ambient occlusion going on here I see a bit happening here so just in here the armpit area is a bit darker you can have a core shadow which we sort of shut, set up already which would be just sort of a center of the shadow here and there especially especially in rounded objects and of course a little bit of ambient occlusion in there as well wherever wherever you have like sort of a change of uh, surface you can have a bit of ambient occlusion as well so we can paint in a couple of these uh, little know, holes maybe where other bullets or cannon or something hit hit it Uh, and something else that we can do because this is all relatively one color and if I make this bigger and we zoom in you can see there's some yellow oranges here there's some whites here there's some brownish there's some gray there you want a little bit of change and variation in your colors so what you can do is add a new layer and just rename it into color variation and just add in some other colors so as I said some oranges and then maybe we can do some blue grays just a bit darker as well we will not leave it like this but what we will do is go to our layer uh, press the N here and see what sort of uh, how can we play with it so it gives us a somewhat interesting effect usually end up with overlay if we bring down the opacity enough you will still see some changes so some orange there some orange there this is just one way one quick way so this is relatively i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for you guys to only use you can do picture overlays a lot of other methods but this is a relatively quick and easy way to bring in some variation into your colors. Of course, it makes more sense if you think about why would it be discolored here. You know, like for him, you can see a rust is building up. There was probably water there. So it, it's always going to be cooler if you think about, oh, OK, so where will be their rust? Why would be, there be a bit more yellow or, or a reddishness? You know, so stuff like that will do much more than if you just randomly slap colors on it but as a start this should work as well and yeah this would be a relatively quick fast dirty approach of coloring your robot you can take away your lines and see your robot there and here you can see that make technically we could make the darker areas darker this this sort of so these were the ambient occlusion stops and we can spots and we can probably bring in much more of those but for now, as a quick color, I think this works. So yeah, thank you for Ketso Petso for allowing us to use his amazing work as reference, even though I didn't ask him. I hope you guys liked this video, you learned, hopefully you learned something from it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the comment section down below. If you feel like supporting me, you don't have to, but you can find links in the description how to do that. And as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.